Oh, well, that's everyone's Matt Brozick, and this will be my next project after finishing up the uh, Xenart Spidey to Symbiote Spidey job last week. This is the custom quarter scale Captain America. I've already done one video on this, kind of introducing the kit and everything, but here are all the parts laid out. You can see they're wet. I just gave everything a bath. So every time I get a kit, even though it's from China in a factory, I go in my bathtub with some dish soap, dishwashing soap and a scrub brush, and I give everything a really good bath just to make sure everything's clean. Um, so this is the parts layout. It's really, really nice the way they had this done. Here's the base. Excuse me, it's pretty simple. It's got some uh, like uh, sand texture with some bullets, uh, spent cartridges, uh, some bullets and some bullets and some spent cartridges on the ground with his footprints, and then a sim simple plinth for a base. So uh, that's pretty nice. I like it. Uh, the way it's broken down is amazing. It's, a, it's like a painter's dream. <laughs> Even this. Even the star in the chest is magnetized, so you don't have to mask that off. So the only real masking will be on the shields. Over here we have the classic and the round shield. And then uh, on the faces, because we've got one unmasked portrait, which I really like. And then we have three masked portraits. And again, we got four heads, and I'm not sure exactly why. Um, these two look to be very similar. The only difference is like you can see his eyebrows here, and this one you don't see his eyebrows. So that's the main difference. Oh, there's some slight differences in the cowl too. Not much, but a slight difference. And then this one, I really like this helmet with the leather, the leather helmet. That's probably my second favorite. You can see a little bit of his hair coming out of the back here. But I think today what I'm gonna work on is the um, the boots and the gloves. Kind of get that red down. We're going with the classic color. So these be kind of like the Mars red color with shading. And then I need to find out on the shield that he wants to do white with blue and red or like metal with blue and red because if I know I can put the base coat down on if it's white or metal and then the blue we're going to do um, a classic color not like a baby blue but um, a softer blue he basically likes what I did with the Gravin Labs um, Captain America prototype I did over a year it's been over a year it's been a long time with the Eagle he kind of likes that color palette so we're going to go with that uh, one thing which is interesting <laughs> when I was washing this part of the boot came off it it's not supposed to come off but it did so i need to fix that um just a just a weak joint i guess and that's not like even glued on this is i guess cast as one piece but that's just a weak point so i'll just glue that on that's not the end of the world i've had other things i've had worse things break on me um yeah nice sculpt nice kit so uh i'm gonna clear the workbench and get the boots and everything and the gloves on here and then we'll work on getting those painted first and then I'll find out what he wants to do with the shields as far as uh, colors go on that. So we'll come back in a second. All right, so I got the parts out that I'm gonna be working on right now. I also think I can um, possibly get the white sprayed on the abs and the arms and the star. And if he does have... Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. The little wings that go on his helmet right here now, I've only got two there's only one home to get these I've got one set of two one second yeah. only one helmet gets the wing so I could get that spray today um, and I'm waiting to hear back if he wants me to do on the shields if I'm gonna do white or like an aluminum look on the stripes on the well, I'm using the Gravin Labs kit I did a while ago as a reference, and I think I think I did white stripes, white with candy red stripes um, on the Gravin Labs shields. That's more of a classic look. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fix this thing that broke, and it's real simple. I'm just gonna put some super glue in here and fix this. Luckily, it's in a spot you don't see, but it's really weird that that busted. It's like no. I'm really curious to know why I did that. Maybe it's just really thin there. Actually, you know, that looks like those were casted, this was casted separately. It just wasn't, because I can see the glue joint, it just wasn't glued in very well. So we're gonna fix that. Just gonna put a bead of super glue in here. I'll keep it upside down like this so it doesn't run everywhere. I'm just going to use a Q-tip to kind of smooth that joint 
we join in a little bit. You're not gonna be able to see it, but it just makes it a little cleaner. Like so, and then I'm gonna hit with some kicker. With some zip kick. So I think um, I've got a kind of a plan, a plan of attack in my head for this kit. So I think today my goal is to get the boots and the gloves and kind of like the white painted on the chest and the arms and the star. And if I find out that he wants white stripes on the shields, I can get those painted because those have to dry overnight for me to mask the red off. Same on the chest to do that. And then the next step would be to paint the skin tones because I can't do any of the blue until the skin tones are done because the blues are all going to be the same. So, uh, so like then tomorrow I work on the portraits and then that would probably take me a full day because there's four portraits. And then uh, Wednesday would be like the blues and masking. Thursday would be like the reds. Um, so yeah, it's going to take me five days to get this painted. I think, I think it's going to take me, it's going to be a five day job, which is what I anticipated. And it's because of the number of portraits. If there's like one or two portraits, it'd probably take me less time. But again, um, it's probably a 40 hour paint job just to get this all done. Okay, so I'm gonna hit this with a hair dryer real quick to get this uh, kicker to dry. So another thing is that I'm out of Mars Red. I do have a Mars Red Rattle Can Primer. Um, I can see what that, that might be the perfect starting tone for this before I do any shading. Let me go see if I have, I'll be right back. Okay, so I do not have a Mars Red Primer, so I need to come up with a base color for this, uh, for these um, boots. I'm seeing what I have in my stock or I just need to custom mix something, which is probably what I'll have to do. Um, let's see what I got. That's not the right tone. Yeah, I may have to uh, mix up a custom color here. So, for that, let's see what I got. That actually might be. That's going to be too dark. All right, let's see what we got here. Because Mars Red is like the perfect base coat for this kind of reddish brown that we're going to go for. But I think I just need to mix something up. So I'm going to do that. Let me get a cup. Mix up paint in. Right back. Okay, we're gonna need like some red, a little bit of brown, a little bit of orange. Thinking this might be a good tone to start with. Sorry, I had to pause. My buddy Floyd gave me a call, so I had to. I gotta stop with Floyd. Okay, so while I was on the phone, I mixed up this kind of color here. So this is a combination of Deco Art Santa Red with quite a bit of uh, acrylic craft paint orange, and then I added some rich brown. So I kind of got this rusty brown kind of red color, which I think is going to be uh, a good tone for us. I just mix it with water. Uh, again, you got to build this up really slowly. So this is craft paints. And I choose my little stir because otherwise you can never get it mixed up quite right. Let me see if I got enough water in there to get this to spray through the airbrush. Uh, and I might drill some holes in here. Yeah. To hold these. So one thing I do to hold the parts is I'll, I'll drill some holes in a spot that you don't see so I can put these on a stick. So usually it's a, 
look right. Just down the key. Okay, be careful you don't go through. <laughs> you need to make you create more work for yourself if you go through. So I just drill a little hole down there and I can put this on a stick. So this is the right size hole. There we go. Okay. Now I'm gonna see if this is the right thickness. This paint. Let's get also all the stuff that's gonna go white out of the way so I don't get this color on there. I'm sure I need to do it a little bit. Mixing, no big deal. Okay. Got a little paint in my brush, my airbrush. That's about the right consistency. So again, with these craft paints, you just gotta go slow, build up real lightly at a time. You just can't lay it on. But they do spray. Nice. Once you get a mix right, they spray really nice. I don't know the exact ratio of the colors, I just kind of mixed, started mixing things together until I got the color I wanted. But it's mostly that sand or red and the orange. Um, and then I just put a little bit of brown in there. And then once I get these base coat, we'll seal them. And then we'll go in and do the shading or the shadows. This looks to be about the right color. I didn't do any videos. I did very few videos on the Gravin Labs Captain America, so I don't have like, like I don't know the colors I use. Um, and I, I usually don't take notes on colors. The only, the only color scheme I've got any notes on are uh, the Hulk, where it takes me like the 12 layers to do. And even then with the notes, it, they always come out slightly different. Okay, so I'm gonna continue to base coat the gloves and the boots and we'll come back, because this will take me a while since they're so thin. Okay, so for shading, I'm gonna try uh, Ghost, um, Badger Minutes here, Ghost in Brown. We've got this reduced with some water and some retarder. So I hope I can get in there nice and tight and get these wrinkles taken care of. Oops, looks like my um, top coat is still drying there. Let's make sure these are dry. I put them on. I put it on pretty, pretty heavy for that first round of sealer. Just like to make sure I've got a good uh, protective coat on there. So. So I'm gonna do a little bit of this on camera and I'll do the rest off, but. Oops. Too fast. I got this pretty thin, so I gotta be careful. mix water and retarder in there.
Oh, crap. My boot fell and I wanted to scratch the other one. I got some of that paint mixed up if it did, but it's never fun. Scratch your paint. Okay, so I got a little more, a little more tint in here. Straps will hand paint. A little bit of shadow to the wrinkles and stuff. It'll take a little while. Some pretty nice, some nice details sculpted in. So I'm going to go ahead and finish doing this and when I'm done I'll come back and we'll take a look at it. Okay so I got everything sealed and it's looking really good. The chain is a little subtle but it's nice there, it's natural looking. So uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go and I'm going to paint the soles of the, uh, the boots brown. And my client's like, should we do a brown sole? I'm like yeah, that's what, I'm going to do. that's what I'm going to do. So I do this is where I'm using Gravin Labs as the kind of the reference, that's what we're going to do. So um, for that I just got Vallejo, uh, this is their Nocturna line burnt flesh. Just kind of this, um, this color right here. And, um, I'm going to put this on. And then I'm probably going to do like a wash over it to bring it down a little bit and uh, add some tonal variation to it. But this covers in one coat very nicely. I just put it on straight from the bottle. It goes on smooth. And one coat. Now once it starts to dry, you don't want to go over it with your brush. Just let it kind of flow out naturally. And you'll get better results. I sometimes tend to go over paint too much and work it too much. And then when you do that, you start, that's when you start getting brush strokes. Just let it kind of do its thing. Let it flow out. I may actually go back in here and add a little bit more shading to the boots. Add with that brown again. We'll see. And if I do that, I just may hit the soles with that. camera and I'll be going off and then we'll take a look at it again just base coating base coating takes a while so just a little bit of a lip right here I want to make sure we get that This 
dries down quite a bit. It's amazing how much these Vallejo paints dry down. They dry down at least a, a, a half a shade to a full shade darker than what they are in the bottle. It's kind of crazy. And then on the bottom, I just kind of slop it on to get it in all the crevices. Yeah, so today's goal is to get the glove, the boots done, and kind of get um, the white base coat down on the shield. I can probably get the I can probably get the, the the shading done on the on the chest area, or not the chest, but like the abs. I'll probably get that done today. That'd be a good thing to get done. Then I can mask off the red. Because what I'll do is I'll shade, what I'll do is for the, for the abs, I'll paint everything white and shade it. And then I'll just mask off the white stripes and then the shading will, will already be there for the red. Because if you watch my videos, you'll see that I will typically base, when I do a red, I'll typically base on white, do my shading. And then just lay a red, lay red on top of it, building up the color until I get the tone I want. Because it's a very uh, translucent color. It's really crappy at hiding, so it's good to do your shading with, you know, white or gray, whatever you want to do, brown, black, you know, if you want to, I tend to use white, it just keeps the vibrance of the red. You can see in here, I'm just, I'm not being real careful about it, I'm just slapping it on. Kind of have to do that to get all these little nooks and crannies. And this will take a while to dry, because I put this on pretty, I guess it's straight from the bottle, so it's a little heavy. When you do that, it takes it a while to dry before you can do anything else to it, so. I got everything covered. If you don't, you're gonna miss something. I'm also pretty excited because I'm working on my first third scale figure print. It's gonna look pretty cool, I think. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So right there you can see how far that dried down from when I first put it on that. <clears throat> Quite a difference. Let me sure I'm gonna cut down a little bit here along the the boot. There you go. Okay, so I'm gonna do that to the other boot. And then uh, we'll let it dry for a little bit and then I may go back in and add a little more shading. Okay, so now, now on the soles of the boots, I'm just going in and brushing on some of this uh, Minotaur brown on top of it, just darkening it all down, and uh, getting the, you know down the bone, getting all the crevices and stuff, and just like kind of flow around, and it does a nice job of bringing out the details in the sole. It's fairly simply sculpted, but there are some details in there. Um, and then one thing is that um, even though I'm gonna have a few little brush strokes, it kind of adds to the to the sculpt because the, it's, it's rubber, so it kind of makes it look like manufactured rubber, which is cool. So um, now I just decide that later when I put this on the base, if I'm gonna do any like dust effects, so that's my client, if he wants any, like to do any dust effects up on the side of the boots or anything. But once I flat coat that, that should look nice. So I'm gonna do that to the other boot. The trick is getting this on something so it doesn't lean and mess up the paint. I'm just taking a, a brush and just kind of brushing it on. And it falls. There's a few little details sculpted in here. 
actually should do the bottom first. That's what I figured out on the first one, I should have done the bottom first. Because the bottom you have to kind of slop on and you get some of it up on the sides and it kind of messes up the work I do on the sides. So I'm going to do the bottom first. Like that, and just kind of let it flow around, let it down in between all the, the treads and everything. You don't see this part, but it's sculpted really nicely. They did a nice job sculpting the bottom of the boots. I also base coated the leather on the arms and I base coated the leather belt. I'll show that to you here in a second too. And I sealed those. And I think we go in with this brown also. To kind of give it a more brown tone, but it, it, it'll be different than the boots and the soles because the base color is different. I like to rest my, my I like to rest my finger on the bottom of the sole to uh, make sure I get a steady hand. So I'll make it more challenging because it's all wet down there now. I kind of come in here. I just use the brush, spread out, spread the bristles out, right up against the boot. messy right now but we're going to smooth it out here in a second. Just want to kind of get the paint on there. I said rubber earlier, or well, this one be a rubber, this would be a leather sole. I meant to say leather. There's a little line right here between the sole and the boot. I'm trying to fill in. It's a nice little detail line. It kind of separates the two materials. Alice is still kind of wet. It'll start to get sticky soon. I got to kind of just smooth things out a little bit. Just light brush strokes. If I get a few little brush strokes and it's okay, it just kind of adds to the effect.
Yeah, just let that let this dry. Seal it. Let's see what it looks like. Let's match this. Look at the two, make sure we're pretty close. Yeah, I think we're good. All right, so we'll let this do its thing. Back to those. Again, the hard part is to getting this onto something so it doesn't mess up the paint. Underneath. Okay. Uh, on the. Uh, where are they? Here they are. Leather straps on the hands. The base coat these in a darker leather. But I think I am going to go in here with this brown and just add a little bit of this to it. Just add a little rich, rich, richness to it. Let's spit it out. So again, this is just the clear brown from Minotaire. One little spot back here I just can't get my brush to. Let's see if I can get some of this clear in there to cover it up. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna do this off camera because I need to see better and I'll come back. All right, so moving on to the white. So what I did first, I base coated everything that's gonna go white except for like the stuff on the helmets that I gotta do later. And uh, Garage Kits that US semi transparent warm gray number five. So I base coated in that. And I'm gonna go in and I'm going to do shading with warm gray number seven. And then we're gonna go on top of that with white. So this is warm gray number seven. It's not quite black, it's a nice dark gray. Turn my air pressure down a little bit. I'll just show you a little bit on camera. Again, this takes a little while. Like for the abs here. I'm going go in here and That was. Like this.
this and I'm gonna little soft shadows in here. You hit those. Come on. Getting dry tip. That looks really stark right now. <clears throat> that will blend it all in in a little bit. Oops. I just like to always put a little shadow at the very bottom here. Okay, so that's the idea. We're gonna go through and do that on the arms and the shields and the star. And then we'll start putting white on top to blend it all in. So when we're ready for that, we'll come back. Okay, so now we're going to go in and start adding the white. So I've got uh, Mr. Color Character White in my airbrush and I'm gonna hit the highlights first and just kind of start blending it in. I'm gonna back off so these are kind of nice soft transitions. Piece of trash come out of my airbrush just now, great. Get the highlights, bring those up. Uh, paint's dry for a couple hours. I had to go. I think I was in a soccer practice with the acrylic dry for a few hours, which is good. Now I can come in here and start doing this. Start kind of blending this in.
really like this character why I need to start using it more. It's a nice, um, it's hard to describe. It's kind of like a, it's like, it's, it's like a cool white, but it's almost, a, it's almost like a crazy, crazy light gray. It's not quite pure white. I really like it for this kind of thing. So it doesn't look jarring. in so I get the look I want. I think I mentioned before that I'll probably end up gluing a lot of this kit together because I think I can, I think, I have to look at the box again, the packaging, but I think it, when it came packaged, it was like the legs were together, the torso was together, it was like all together in the box, it just came apart with the magnets, but if it, so I'll probably, if, it, if, it, if I can pack it that well, I'll probably end up gluing it all together. Um, they just separate it out for painting, which is really nice. So that's looking pretty good. Nice subtle shading in the white, looks pretty natural. And then when this dries tomorrow, over, or when this dries overnight, I can go in and mask off the red stripes. So then we're gonna leave that. That looks pretty good. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the arms and the shields. Again, just kind of start off with building up a highlight in the middle of the, of the muscle. In this area in the right in the crutch here there's a couple little details and you get some better light so I can see what I'm doing. Sorry I have to get underneath this light so I can see what I'm doing. I was about to do on my camera, so. This, this kind of shading is a little different than I normally show you guys. This is kind of like going back to how I would shape my Gundams, back in my Gundam days. Okay, so we got the highlights kind of established. Now we're going in. Start blending. And those white, the uh, bright spots will just get brighter, and the shadows will get filled in a little bit, and just start to melt and look more natural. So after I do this arm on camera, I'll do the rest off camera and just show you the the results. And I'll seal these tonight too, just to protect the paint. So I'm 
misting when I'm like this. There's not, there's not a lot of paint coming up out of the airbrush. I'm just fogging it on, slowly building up the, the tone. I don't want to, I don't want to put it on wet because then I'll go too far and it won't be even. Build it up. When I do this kind of thing, I basically blend until the shading almost looks like it's gone. Cause it all, once it dries down, it's usually right where I want it. Chest pieces already dried down a little bit. It's looking really nice. So I'm going to continue to do this on all the other pieces and we'll come back and take a look at it. I want to show you real quick what the shields look like before I blend it in. So I just hit the center of the stars and the stripes on both sides. On both shields. Oh, I haven't done the back side of this one, but here's the front. I'll do the back side and then we'll blend it in. All right, so I Finished up the white last night, sealed everything and let it dry, and we're looking really good. So I'm gonna call this work in progress done. In the next video, I'll mask these off and we'll get ready to start spraying the uh, candy blue and candy reds on the shields, as well as the red stripes on the, the abs. And then we'll uh, probably tackle the skin tones because I can't do any of the blues until the skin tones are done. The hand, the gloves and boots are done. This is looking really nice. Did a little extra, I went back and did a little more shading on the gloves and boots, painted the metal straps, and did a little shading on these leather straps here. I may do a little bit of dry brushing those later. Um, I'll ask my client if he wants me to weather them up or not, but uh, we we'll, may do that later. So those right now are for the most part done, I think. And the same thing on the boots. Um, I think this is my piece. I would do some, maybe some dust effects on the boots since it's standing, he's standing on some sand. But uh, these look really good too. And I also went back in and hit the shading a little bit more just to get a little more detail. Cause after I flat coated, I kind of lost a little bit of it. But uh, so I wanted to bring some of it back and it's looking really good. So that's the end of work in progress one. Work in progress two will mask and probably tackle the portraits. So stay tuned. <laughs>